the king. All oh, hail the king. Our redeemer is strong. Lord of hosts is his name. All oh, hail the king. All oh, hail the king. Our redeemer is strong. Lord of hosts is his name. All oh, hail the king. All oh, hail the king. Our redeemer is strong. Lord of hosts is his name. All oh, hail the king. All oh, hail the king. Our redeemer is strong. Lord of hosts is his name. All oh, hail the Ancient of Days and the Elect One, Abenawa, we are sustained. Thou protect us, the Holy Spirit, while we remain. Father, collect us, distinctively, call by your name. Recollect us, your battle acts of war, spiritually waxes strong. To put incorruptible on and transform. Cherubins like Voltrons, faces like lions, wings on the side of them, spinning like spirals right beside them. Scorching through your Zeus, Messiah's in Neptune. After the anarchy and Leviathan let loose, bringing the forces of the Gentiles. Millenniums, y'all ran wild. It's time to rebuild the holy land, y'all defiled. Three times a year they will appear before his crown. Humbled after the battle for the Feast of Tabernacles. The nations out of Israel will see no rain like Cali if they don't present themselves gladly before the king. All oh, hail the king. All oh, hail the king. Our redeemer is strong. Lord of hosts is his name. All oh, hail the king. All oh, hail the king. Our redeemer is strong. Lord of hosts is his name. All oh, hail the king. All oh, hail the king. Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. This is El Dayo from One Nation, One Power. Coming back to you, brothers and sisters, one more time. Giving honor to the Most High, Ahaya, His Son, Yeshaya, and unto the Holy Spirit, giving honor where honor is due to all of the brothers out there that are baptizing worldwide. I mean, you, 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 you're working for the Most High. You're doing it now. I mean, we got... According to the second stick, people all over the earth are waking up. And that's all the glory goes to the Most High. Now, I'm going to get your Bible out. Get your paper and get your pencil. If you got dust on your Bible, blow that dust off your Bible. Because I'm going to take my time this morning to try to reach back and help some of our people to come into a better understanding of what they're dealing with as it pertains to Christianity. And I'm going to use the Bible. I'm going to use the Bible. And today we're going to let the Bible speak according to the book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. According to Psalms 119, 104, uh, Isaiah 28, 9, uh, precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Uh, we're going to break down our Bible according to Psalms 119, 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Are you guys out there hearing me? For our new Christian friends out there, let's go there. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28. I like to prove everything I say, and today I'm going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, in a court of law, that the image that America has been worshiping from its conception is recorded in the Bible. It's part of the curses. So we want Isaiah chapter 28, and go with me to verse 9. You got to see it with your own two eyes. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Verse 9, Isaiah 28 and 9. Who shall he teach knowledge? Question mark. The most I ask in a question. If the Bible was to be easily interpreted, why would he ask this question? He's saying, who shall I who can I teach the Bible? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who out there can he help to make to understand the Bible? This doctrine here. It's talking about the Bible. Them that I weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. You can't be a baby no more. No more gag gag goo goo. You got to grow up 
and you got to accept the Bible for what it says and stop cherry picking the Bible so that the Bible can fit your religion or your mindset or your lifestyle. That's what we do in America. We've been taught to go into the Bible, cherry pick it, and make it fit our lifestyle. Well, that day is over, my friend. That day is done. Throw it in the trash. For precept must be above precept. For precept must, must, must be above precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. What? Here a little and there a little. What? You can't read the Bible like a Harlequin novel and get the complete understanding. Though in some passages, you can read it the whole chapter to get the understanding. You can't just go into the Bible, pull out John 3.16, and think that there's only one world when you go over to Hebrews 11. And you'll see that he framed the worlds with an S on the end. And then you got to go over to understand what world that is according to Isaiah 45 and 17. Then you got to understand what who did God say he loved. We so often like to tell the world who God loved when God said out of his own mouth in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 and 7, who he loved. He said it out of his own mouth. So what you're going to do, you're going to listen to God. We got to start to listen to God. I'm using God for the babies out there. You got to listen to God, not your pastor. Listen to God, not your preacher. Listen to God. Don't take the Bible out of context. Stop letting these preachers, you, you get something from God, you take it to a preacher, he's going to lead you down the loony bin line. You're going to be crazy as a Bessie bug by the time you get out of there, my friend. So... Let's look at our Bible and see what our Bible is talking about as it pertains to this other Jesus. Can we do that, my friend? Can we go for a ride? Put your seatbelt on. We're going to break down this first stick like only I know I can. So first, we're going to start off first. You've got to know who the people of the Bible are before you can even begin to understand the Bible. Go first to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Go first to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to start at verse 15 and we're going to just read one verse. We're going to get a little here and a little there. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, if you continue to read, he'll give you specifics as to what curses will hit the people of God. But we're going to deal specifically with one curse in particular. We're going to deal with Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Let's go. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And this is where I got to go to my old, my newer Bible. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. If the Most High is going to scatter us among all people, the reverse of that is we were not living among all people. This right here, you can put 1 Nephi 13 right here. If he's going to scatter us among our people, then there was a time in history that we did not live amongst our people. You get that? Let's read it again. And the Lord shall scatter thee among our people. So that means at one time we were not living among our people. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there... Thou shalt serve other gods. What? And there. Thou shalt serve other gods. And what? And there. Thou shalt serve other gods. Other gods. Other gods. Other gods. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So we will begin to serve gods that our forefathers never knew because our forefathers never lived among the other nations. So our forefathers would not have known 
of a European God named Jesus Christ. I'm making this as easy that a baby can understand. I'm going to read this all over again. Verse 64, Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. If he's going to scatter us among all people, that means that at one time we did not live among all people. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. When? When the other people among us, that lives among us, introduce us to their God. That's when we would serve other gods. Once we were scattered among all people, we would begin to serve the gods of the other nations. This is Bible prophecy. This is one of the curses. This is where you get European Jesus Christ from, and I'm going to prove it. So now, we serve in other gods. So now, where do we want to go now? You want to go now to 2 Corinthians. This is part of the curses, that we would serve other gods. Why? Our ancestors sinned against the Most High, and made him mad. And you don't want to make your daddy mad because you will get your butt whooped. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 1 through 4. Second Corinthians 11, beginning at verse number 1. Would to God that you could bear with me a little in my father. All right, verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. That I what? I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. That I what? That I may present you to Christ like a virgin. There go your breakdown for the book of Revelations. Talking about these men were virgins. There you go. Let's continue. Verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you have received another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Stop. When did this other Jesus come into play? Now go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Because the Mosiah said he would make us worship other gods, even wood and stone. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Meaning at one time you were not living among all people. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. From the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Part of the curses. You shall serve other gods. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Even wood and stone. Our fathers at this time never knew about a guy named Jesus who had blonde hair and blue eyes. This is where you get 2 Corinthians from. If anybody comes to you and preaches another Jesus. Why are they talking about another Jesus right here in the book of Corinthians at the Corinth church? Who was ruling things at this time? Who was ruling things at this time? The Romans. Now, get your apocrypha out. Get your apocrypha out. This is a historical record. We're going to go to 2 Maccabees. We're going to go to 2 Maccabees. 2 Maccabees in your apocrypha. 2 Maccabees in your apocrypha. 
Second Maccabees, what we want. What we want. Is it second Maccabees or first Maccabees? First Maccabees 3. First Maccabees chapter 3. Second, first Maccabees 3, 47 and 48. Now we're talking about another Jesus. Why is this in the book of Corinthians? Let's read Corinthians chapter 11 again. 2 Corinthians 11 again. 2 Corinthians 11 again. And we're going to deal with verse 4. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. 2 Corinthians 11. I'm in 1 Corinthians telling you guys 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 4. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. I'm in my new Bible, so be patient with me. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For if he that come and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, whom we have not preached, we didn't preach this other Jesus. We preach the real Jesus. For if he that come and preaches another Jesus, which means at this time they was preaching the real Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if we receive another spirit. You see what come with the other Jesus is another spirit, not the spirit of the Most High God. When you worship the other Jesus, you get an, another spirit that is not the spirit of the Most High God, but is actually the spirit of the devil. For if he that come and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if we receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. So right here, this is a lot being said right here. People are walking around on the earth worshiping the false image of Jesus Christ, and they got another spirit of love. That's another spirit. It's all love. It don't see that God can do no... It don't believe Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It don't believe that verse. It believe it can do, say, and act any way it won't. It's still going to heaven. That's another spirit. That's not the spirit of the Most High God. Now, according to this record, let's read, when did the other Jesus come? 1 Maccabees 3, 47 and 48. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their head and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the law, the Bible, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So the heathen had started at this time during the time of Judas Maccabees, they started painting the likeness of their images in the Bible. This is historical fact. This is historical fact. This is a fact. The heathen has started to paint the likeness of their images in our book. This is historical record. You cannot deny this. And a matter of fact, they go to 912 AD. They go to real Christ. 912 AD, there is the real Christ. They go to Christ that Peter preached. They go to Christ that Paul preached. They go to Christ that all 12 disciples preached. See him right there? See that dark skinned man in 912 AD? There is the original Christ. But today, you're being taught that this is Christ because you are ignorant of your information. If we simply read the information left us by the Most High, you couldn't fall into this trap because it's a trap, my friend. Now, go to Wisdom of Solomon. 
Stay in the Apocrypha. Go to Wisdom of Solomon. Now go to Wisdom of Solomon. Give me a minute. Let me find it. Wisdom of Solomon. We want Wisdom of Solomon. 14. Wisdom of Solomon 14 is now going to give you a further historical record that what I'm saying is true. All you got to do is read the record, brothers and sisters. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 15. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as a god. What? Now honored the son that died an early death as a god which was then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. What? He set up worship to the son that died an untimely death. This is telling you about your other Jesus. Verse number 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. And the graven image were worshipped by the commandments of kings. It's been kept as a law. When? Now you got to know the time period. Now you got to know that your other Jesus was given to you at the formation of the United States of America. When you see that picture right there of the real Christ, and the people that they actually took down in America in 1492, they had to give you an image of themselves that conquered you. They're not going to continue to let you worship the real God, the real son of God, while they are the ones that conquered you. So they conquered you in 1492. And we can read that information also too. That's a historical record. They gave you a new God. New, new, new colonists, new God. New, he who wins the war gets to make the God. Are you with me? So now we got a record of when the other Jesus came, brothers and sisters. This is not hard. Now, go to Deuteronomy 32 and 17. Deuteronomy. 32 and 17, Deuteronomy, 32 and 17, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, 32 and 17, and let's see if there is a prophecy that we will worship new gods, Deuteronomy, 32 and 17, Deuteronomy, 32, and 17. We'll start at 16. 16 and 17. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods, to what? New gods, to what? New gods to what? New gods. A father afflicted with the death of his son made an image of his son soon taken away. And they gave unto him ceremonies and sacrifices. A new God. And after a while, a long time, that custom, that ungodly custom became a law. Sunday worship with the false Jesus. And you guys trying to, you, your church is teaching you that another Jesus just now coming. You've been worshiping another Jesus since 1492. You see this? You guys wasn't even born yet. Your great, great grandmama and them was worshiping another Jesus. This was passed down through gene generations. They sacrificed unto devils and not to God, to gods whom they knew not. To what? Gods whom they knew not. 
Isn't that the prophecy of Deuteronomy 28, 64? That you will worship gods that your forefathers knew not? Because they worshiped the God uh, in 912 AD on this picture. That's who our forefathers worship. This is a new God. All right, go to Jeremiah 3 and 2. The precept in our Bible. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 2. Jeremiah 3 and 2. Jeremiah 3 and 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways has thou set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. See that? This is why we're in Islam today. There it go right there. Jeremiah 3 and 2. See who you lying with as the Arabian in the wilderness? This is why you're a Muslim. That's part of the curses. That's part of the curses. Jeremiah 3 and 2, my Islamic brother. Read it. There you go. You're trying to figure out why we all in all of these religions? That's part of the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's not just specific to Christianity. It's got to do with every religion on the earth, even Buddhism. You'll find us in every religion on the earth worshiping other gods that look not nothing like the God that our ancestors worshiped. That's how you know we the children of it. Now go to the book of Acts. No. Where do you want to go? Go to Galatians. Here a little and there a little. Go to the book of Galatians. I got my new Bible once again, so bear with me. Go on to the book of Galatians. Going to the book of Galatians. Come on, New Bible. Galatians. We want Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 13. Galatians 3 and 13. Now let me show you why now we are able to come back to the God that our ancestors worshipped. It's in the Bible, folks. I'm going to show you right now. You're getting away from this one. And you're coming back to the original. Go to Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Where is it written? Right here next to this verse, you want to write down Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 22 and 23, next to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. That's where it's written. Cursed is everyone that's hanged on the tree. Now, right here in Galatians 3 and 13, it says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Many people read this and get uh, their minds start falling apart. Christ has redeemed us from the curse, from the curse, from the curse of the law, from the curse of the law, from the curse of the law, from the curse of the law. Now, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, meaning he broke the spell, the curse of us worshiping the false image of Jesus Christ. He broke the power the curse in Deuteronomy 2864 that we will worship other gods, wood and stone, that's part of the curses. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So now you're seeing us return to the original Son of God. You guys need to share this video with your family. Now you're returning to the original. Son of God. Now, let's prove Acts 
I mean Galatians 3.13. Go to Acts. Go to Acts chapter 10. Go to Acts chapter 10. Precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Go to Acts chapter 10. We want verse 36. Start at verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness. And what? Worketh righteousness. You got to work righteousness. That's Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Righteousness is keeping the laws of God. That's how you work righteousness. Now, he doesn't give you the right to commit adultery. Now, he doesn't give you a right to live in fornication. Now, he does not give you a right because sin, 1 John 3 and 4, is the transgression of the law. Verse number 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. What word did the Most High send to the children of Israel? He sent the white flag. Because why? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So all those curses that was upon us was broken when Christ was hanged on the tree and was the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. So now there was a white flag to the children of Israel saying now you can return to the Father. Now you can return to the God of your ancestors. Now you can return to the biblical black Christ. Now you can return. Go to Deuteronomy 21 and let's read where it is written Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Christ's death on the tree was the law. Deuteronomy 21 and number and, and 20, 22. Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. And we want verse 22 and 23. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 22 and 23. Now Christ's death at the cross was him keeping the law. Verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, and what? And thou hang him on a tree, and what? If the man sinned, did Christ have the sins of the world on it? They were not his sins. They were our sins. Our sins were upon the Son of the God, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a curse of God that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. What did Christ's shedding of the blood on the tree also do? It removed the curse of the land. We're going to get our lands back. <laughs> you guys need to read Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 22. Let's read 23 again. He... His dying on the cross meant so much more than what we've been taught. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. That thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. That thy land be not defiled, that thy land be not defiled. That thy land be not defiled, because he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So now you can return back to the God of your forefathers. Now you can return back to the God that Paul preached. Now you can return back to the God that Peter preached. Now you can return back 
you better hear me talking. To the God that Brother Saul Paul preached. Now you can return back to the God that Matthew preached. Now you can return back to the God that John preached. Now you can turn back and return to the black Christ that walked the earth. Hello, according to the Bible. And whatever you do, please don't go read uh, Acts 13 and 1. I don't want you to faint or drop your coffee. But now, let's see. Let's go deeper. One more. Go to Revelations 9 and 20. Go to Revelations 9 and 20. Go to Revelations 9 and 20. The Most High is merciful. The Most High is merciful. Everything he do, he, do, he got mercy connected to it. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all will come to the knowledge of his son. Even when he whooping you. Romans, not, I mean, Revelations 9. And we want verse number 20. Revelations 9 and 20. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their deaths. What type of fornication is this? Spiritual fornication. When they introduced the false image of Jesus Christ into the earth. He put the whole earth under spiritual fornication. See, these plagues are being sent by the Most High. I'm prophesying right now. These plagues are being sent by the Most High to get man to return to the real Christ, to the biblical Christ, so that you can stop worshiping another Jesus so that you can stop worshiping wood and stone so that you can stop worshiping things that will not profit you in the day of the most high's visitation it's not going to say go to the book of Habakkuk go to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and we want verses 18 and 19 go to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18 and 19. Now, Revelation chapter 9 and verse 20 is a very prophetic verse because in Isaiah 46 and 10, he declares the end from the beginning, from ancient times, things that are not yet done. That's what he's doing in Revelation 9 and 20. He's saying, I'm going to send all of these plagues. I'm going to send my Israelite nation back to the earth. I'm going to raise them back up. I'm going to send brothers like Elder Ayil that's going to sound the alarm that's going to teach them and show them word for word how to break down the Bible according to Isaiah 28, 9 and 10, according to Psalms 119, 104, for them to get the understanding so that they can repent from worshiping idols, so that they can repent from worshiping another Jesus, that not realizing that Christ in Galatians 3.13 has redeemed us from the curse of the law, making himself a curse for us, in Deuteronomy 28.64, so now we don't have to worship idols anymore of wood and stone. First Maccabees 3.47 and 48, where the heathen painted the likeness of their images in our book. That's where you get your other Jesus. Wisdom of Solomon tells you a father afflicted with untimely mourning of his son made an image of his son, and they then honored him as a god and gave unto him ceremonies and sacrifice. You've been worshiping the other Jesus all your life. That's why you have retained another spirit. And when you hear the truth, you cannot recognize the truth because you think what you have is the truth, not realizing that you've been soaked, dipped, and marinated in lies all of your life. And now you're hearing the truth for the first time. Margot Met said, that in the last days, the truth will ring out on the earth, out of the mouth of the chosen men of the Most High God, that the truth will ring out to restore the children of the light, that the truth 
would ring out to raise up the children of the light to return to the Christ of 912 AD. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18 and 19. What profited the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? The molten image. He's saying, what is it going to profit you? What have you gotten out of? Can that graven image save you from the plague? Go ask the people in China if the statue of Buddha saved them from the plague. Go ask the people in Syria, the Christians, if the cross saved them from the bombs. What profited the graven image? that the maker thereof have graven it. The molten image, a teacher of lies. What come with the molten image? A teacher of lies. Your other Jesus. Your other Jesus that Paul warns you about. What come with it? A teacher of lies. What kind of lies came with the image? John 3.16 For God so loved the world. How is it possible that our, that, that buses and, 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 and people behind advertising, we know Satan behind advertising. That's why New York City looked the way it looked. How is it possible that John 3.16 was posted all over the planet? All oh, from one end of America to another, there was a movement of John 3.16. All over the nation. Who was behind that? Satan. What was he showing you? Another Jesus. God love everybody. God will never punish you. No matter how wicked you live, you go to heaven. No matter what you do, all you got to do is quote Romans 10, 9 and 10. Everything you do after that, God understands and you go to heaven. There go your other Jesus. The laws of God are done away. There go your other, that's how the other Jesus teach. It's a teacher of lies who come with it. Everybody that's teaching that other Jesus, everything they're teaching is a lie. They might get a few points on the truth here and there and get lucky. You ever get lucky and hit a three-pointer? That's what they do. Every now and then they get lucky. But right, they can't stay with the truth because they got a teacher of lies hooked up with an image. How could you know everything and then don't know Jesus Christ is a black man? How could you pretend like you're a preacher or you get words from God and you can't even acknowledge God's people? You ain't talking to God. You operate with another spirit. The devil is very, uh, the very devil ain't no joke. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. What profited the graven image that the maker of have graven it? The molten image. What profit did we get from that image? You got over a hundred and some churches up here on the reservation. And you got more wickedness on the reservation now than you ever have before. You got over a hundred and some churches. You got more homosexuality. You got more drug use. You got more incest. You got more of wickedness than you do of goodness. That right there, my friend, is reality. You need to look and see if, if this religion is profiting me. If it's not profiting your whole family... You ain't supposed to be the only one saved. Your husband's supposed to be saved. And your children's supposed to be saved. What profit did the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusts therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that said to the wood, Awake to the dumb stone, Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth keep silence before him. Now, what profit the molten image? You talking to a stone that don't got no power to help you. You talking to a stone that don't got no power to come to you. You talking to a rock. You talking to an image, a picture. And you've been taught that that picture is the biblical Christ, not realizing that today that the Most High Servant is letting you know in Galatians 3.13 that you have been redeemed from the curse of the law 
out of Deuteronomy 28, 64, that you no longer got to worship the first Maccabees 3, 47, 48 false image of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. That is one of the reasons and the purpose for him laying down his life at the cross was to break all of the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 to 68. This is El Dalio from One Nation, One Power, keeping it real and making it easy. Shalom.